All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all praises and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakudash, the bonus to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and Shalom to your brothers that are laboring and pushing this word in truth and sincerity and with charity. I'm the bre uh, brother Abraham from the camp here in JM in Chicago, coming to do another quick lesson through the Holy Spirit, Lord willing to be edifying. And this video is going to be on the recent news of uh, Iran's attack on Israel, which is expected to happen after Israel killed um, the Hamas uh, leader. I forgot his name, but uh, that happened last week, right? And Iran is expected to retaliate and uh, attack Israel, okay? Um, so we all know this, uh, um, there's a lot of stuff going on in the so-called Middle East, right? Because it's really Southwest Asia, not the Middle East, okay? But it's, uh, a lot of things are happening, okay? And we know the scriptures say that the least of the flock shall draw them out. What does that mean? It means, uh, the least of the flock being the Malachites, which are dwelling in the land of Israel, right? And shall draw who out? Draw the Edomites here in America out to war, All right? And U.S. already said that it will back up Israel no matter what, all right? If anything happens, so... Um, you know, everything is at our front door, okay, and it's just a fulfillment of prophecy, because we know that uh, World War Three will happen, it's inevitable, alright, this is Revelations 11, and... 14 it says the second woe is past and behold the third woe cometh quickly what does woe mean woe means uh destruction a great destruction and what um greater destruction happens than during the time of war okay a lot of death and destruction happens during the times of war okay So let's go ahead and go to the book of um, Matthew, the 24th chapter. And verse 6, it says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. So here the disciples asked the Lord a question. What shall be the signs of your coming and of the end of the world? Right. Meaning at the end of their time. Right. Um, but we are at the end of the days right now. And you see these things happening. You literally see all these things that uh, he listed happening. The wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation, as it goes on to say in verse 7, it says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Alright, we know famine is going to come eventually, right? Pestilences, uh, all those things are, are coming back. Right, and earthquakes. How many earthquakes have we seen in the recent five, ten years already? And all over the world. Okay, it says all these things are the beginning of sorrow. So this is uh, just a start. This is just the beginning. We're not even at peak uh, sorrows, destruction, and woes. Okay. This is just a pregame. Alright. 
So from there, let's go ahead and go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 13. Then verse 4, it says, The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. Right? So pretty much describing the ancient time of how uh, these kingdoms and nations fought each other during the time of war. They would all be lined up, you know, uh, with their shields, armor, helmets, and spears, and swords, horses, chariots, all those things facing each other, and then running towards each other uh, to battle. All right, it says the Lord of hosts mustereth the hosts of the battle. So he's the Lord is in control, right? Um, just as when you were a kid and you had those uh, tiny army men and you would line them all up for the battle, that's pretty much the Lord with what he's doing in the earth today. It says they come from a far country from the end of heaven, he, uh, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land right so now in this time now in the ancient times there's new ways to fight wars all right this is isaiah 54 and verse 16 it says behold i have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth his an instrument for his work and i have created the waster to destroy Right, so just as uh the the smith, right, makes uh his swords through uh you know the coals and the fire and bring brings forth that instrument. Right, so the modern day instrument would be the nuclear missiles, which the Lord gave, uh, pretty much uh to these Edomites and all these nations or whoever you know the understanding and the formula to build these things all right uh and it goes on to say no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn this is the heritage of the servants of the lord and the righteousness of me saith the lord all right, because ultimately the leg will be protected in one way, shape, form, or the other. All right, because they're the Lord's. All right, so no, nothing is going to uh, nothing, none of these weapons will prosper against them. Okay, so let's get um, go back to Isaiah 13. Right, the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Right, Isaiah 54, he created the waster to destroy. All right, it says, How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore, shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid, pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth, and shall they shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames, and they're literally going to be as flames because they're going to be burnt up, right? Their flesh shall consume away as they stand upon their feet, as it says in uh, Zechariah 14. All right, it says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger. To lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. All right, it says, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened and is going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And when this time comes, when this moment happens, uh, there's going to be a lot of destruction, crazy stuff going on. All right, these missiles are going to be shot from one end of the earth to the other, and they're all, uh, for the most part, the majority of them going to be aiming here. 
and Babylon the Great. All right, and also the land of Israel too, because that land needs to be cleansed, and it's going to be cleansed with fire. All right, so when that happens, uh, all these missiles are going to block out the sun, and you know what else is going to block out the sun? The chariots, right? Because when these missiles get shot um, to their destination. We have to be delivered out, out of there before that happens. Alright. It says, And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a, a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Right, an Israelite man, right, and it starts with the elect. It says, Therefore, I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Right, because the scriptures say that the earth shall rock to and fro like a drunkard. What's going to do that? These are nuclear missiles, okay. Alright, so let's get this video from Fox News. Iran attack on Israel expected to come in waves. Imagine being on the ground in Israel and watching that come. From next door, the Hezbollah terrorists firing rockets into northern Israel last night. You know that's one of the uh, the terror groups that are funded and, and basically directed by Iran. The entire Middle East now is on high alert as the U.S. reportedly believes Iran will directly attack Israel as soon as today. President Biden is expected to gather his National Security Council for a meeting in the Situation Room just a few hours from now. It has been nearly a week since a top Hamas political leader was killed in Iran and a Hezbollah commander was killed in Lebanon. Critics say the Biden-Harris administration got us here. This administration got this thing wrong from the very beginning. The Houthis are now attacking U.S. ships, uh, and, you know, commercial ships and U.S. military ships, and they fired a, a, a drone into Israel. Uh, and you know, they Iran funds Hezbollah, they fund Hamas. This could have been completely preventable. This is a an absolute disaster brought to you by really bad decisions by the Biden Harris administration. And our nation is boosting military presence in the region. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin announced the Pentagon will deploy additional fighter jets and Navy warships, including cruisers and destroyers, which can shoot down ballistic missiles. Trey Yinkst in Haifa, Israel, with more now. How that nation where you are is preparing for what we know or highly suspect will be an imminent attack. Trey. Yeah, Harris, good morning. Israel is on edge today as the country braces for an attack from Iran and its proxies. The Wall Street Journal reports that Iran told U.S. and Arab diplomats it didn't care if a counterattack caused a war in the region. We do know just yesterday, Jordan's foreign minister traveled to Iran for a meeting. President Biden scheduled to speak with Jordanian King Abdullah II today. But there has been very little public Iranian interaction with those trying to avert a crisis. With this in mind, Israel is taking steps to prepare for a prolonged conflict, as reports indicate the initial Iranian response could come in waves and include extensive missile and drone attacks all right so there you have it and look at that shot right there or the thumbnail of this video here on the screen right um pretty much uh what ezra saw right and he described it as an arrow being shot from one end of the earth to the other okay that looks like an arrow. Okay.
so this place will be reduced to ashes just as uh one of his many names of this place Ofer means reduced to ashes right and we know what is going to do that all right but just wanted to go ahead and uh do a quick video on that because we're watchmen and we're supposed to watch warn okay so i'm gonna go ahead and the third lord willing this video was edifying as always all honor glory praises goes to yahweh by shun yahweh shai by shun makakwadash double honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone and until the next time shalom